Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone or when you're watching this recording. My name is Nick Brown. I'm a partner here at Granite Harbor Advisors. Welcome to the fifth episode of the 15-minute quarter. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, talking about everything that's happened over the last 90 days as it relates to the market. And this one's titled A Series of Unfortunate Events. I want to go on record and say, I have not read the books. I have not seen the Netflix series. I blatantly stole the title because it felt very appropriate for what we've seen over the last 90 days, not just in the market, but across the globe. So um, I'm wearing a jacket, which can only mean that I have dressed press professorial because uh, I'm going to put a bunch of numbers on a page. <laughs> and I apologize in advance for all the numbers that are going to be on the page throughout this presentation. But it really, we want to use it to tell the story of what's happened in the market, both in the equity markets and in the bond markets, what it means for our clients and investors uh, alike. So without further ado, let's get the legal stuff out of the way. Uh, we're not happy until the lawyers are happy. And so the same thing that we always like to emphasize, hey, this is for informational purposes only. Uh, it's not meant to be investment advice. It's not meant to be something that uh, we ask people to act upon. Uh, every investor's situation is unique and should be considered before they take any action. Also, we're going to be talking about performance numbers. Those can be based off of index data, market data, a variety of sources. They may differ from some of the data other people describe. We try to be as accurate as possible. Just know when we're talking about portfolios, where we're talking about performance number of, of model portfolios, they're just that. They're models, right? These are not actual portfolio results. They're not meant to simulate uh, client performance. It's really just as a guide, as a benchmark for people to have in mind when they're looking at their statements and saying, hey, I did X, mm, Y is a good range for me. So without further ado, we're going to jump in. And we call this a series of unfortunate events because in the news, it almost felt like it was a complete series of unfortunate events from January to February. One silver lining I will tell you about is if you look on this page, nowhere on here will you see the words COVID-19. I think it's probably the first time in a year where we've done one of these market reviews and COVID-19 has really kind of taken a back seat to everything else that's gone on. But we are having to deal with some of the impacts of COVID-19, specifically interest rates and inflation. So one of the first unfortunate events that came up was the fact that interest rates have been going up and interest rates have been going up in, res in response to the inflation that we've seen over the last 90 days and really something that we've been talking about since summer of last year. But then the biggest one is uh, what's happening with Russia and Ukraine. And that's really kind of sent the markets into turmoil because if there is one thing that the equity markets and the bond markets alike do not appreciate its uncertainty. And anytime you have a sovereign nation uh, come into another sovereign nation and start fighting, you create a significant amount of global uncertainty. And so we saw that. Uh, we saw it in the markets. Uh, we've seen it in the bond markets. And we've had really this whole series of unfortunate events that the markets have had to grapple with. And so there's really those three main pressures that are pushing uh, on both sides of the coin. When we talk about what we can invest in, we talk about stocks and we talk, talk about bonds. We've got geopolitical events pushing on stocks. We've got interest rates and inflation pushing on bonds. And that's a recipe for the slide that you're getting ready to see next, which is everything is red. Usually when I put some, some numbers on a page, there's some green, there's some red. And depending on what's happened, maybe stocks are green and bonds are red or bonds are green or stocks are red. In this case, for these last 90 days, everything's been down because of the things that we've talked about uh, over the last five minutes or so. Later on in the presentation, uh, we're going to talk about why that's okay and why that's not totally unexpected and what uh, we can do in order to kind of help mitigate or prevent that when it comes from a portfolio management standpoint. Uh, but for now, this is the tail of the tape. 
uh, for better or worse, the equity market's down anywhere between five and 7%, uh, depending on where you look in the world. And bond markets, because of those rising interest rate environment that we're in, we're also down five, four to five percent, four to six percent to be to be accurate. And the reason that is, we talked about this last quarter, when interest rates go up, that actually has a downward pressure on the underlying price of bonds. Now, the great thing is these, this slide that you're looking at right now, this is a summary. This is if we added everything up together in the market and kind of threw it into one bucket, these are the numbers that we would get out. Not all bonds are created equal. Not all bonds performed this way. And that'll be one of the key takeaways that we talk about in a little bit. But for now, these are the numbers that we're dealing with this quarter. Uh, one important thing to note is that you know, when it comes to equities, we've had that downward pressure. When it comes to bonds, we've had that downward pressure. And it was coincidentally the worst quarter on record for bonds going all the way back to 2001. Um, so pretty significant headwinds, that series of unfortunate events that we talked about at the beginning. Uh, we saw that in the stock and bond markets. So let's talk a little bit more about, you know, what we should expect when it comes to this type of environment, because this really is not our first rodeo. This is not the first time that stocks have been negative and bonds have been negative at the same time. If you've listened to past 15 minute quarters, you've heard me say, hey, stocks do one thing really well, which is long term growth. Bonds do another thing really well, which is acting as an anchor to a portfolio and supporting a withdrawal need. Well, what do you do when both are negative? And is there a precedent for that? So we went and pulled some data from, you know, just six time periods where this happened. And you can see during the black market back all the way back in the 80s and 1987, the Asian crisis, the first Russian debt default, technically they're in another debt default now, the dot-com crash, the subprime crash and the start of COVID-19, these are all periods where the market had to take on either financial stress or geopolitical stress, and both the equity markets and the bond markets responded negatively. And in the grand scheme of things, if you look at what's going on now and where we're at in Q1, we have just barely cracked the top 10, uh, the last, call it, 20 years. Um, we've seen this before. This has happened before. Um, it's not cause for you know too much concern as long as we've done the appropriate planning to account for stuff like that. And that's probably the biggest takeaway because when you say, hey, if stocks are negative, if bonds are negative, what does that mean for my portfolio and how do I fix that? Well, careful planning is to the rescue. One of the things that we always try and do with all of our clients is get a very solid understanding of what their withdrawal needs are. Most people are investing money because they want to use it at some point in the future. And the clearer, we, the clearer picture we have as portfolio managers about when that might be, the closer we can align some of the items that are in the portfolio in order to meet that withdrawal need. And so rest easy, even though broadly stocks are down and broadly bonds are down, that doesn't mean that every single thing in the portfolio is down. And a great example of that is what's going on in fixed income. So when we look at fixed income, you can see there's a variety of bonds that we can invest in. And I wanna highlight the bonds that are what we would call short, right? Uh, we've talked about this a little bit last quarter when we said, hey, interest rates are rising. That's bad for bonds. What do we do? Uh, the, the, if you remember two words, those two words would be stay short. And so that's one of the tools that we have in the tool chest as far as mitigating rising interest rates while still having that allocation of stocks to fight inflation and handling the geopolitical uncertainty that we have. That's a lot for a portfolio to take on. One of the things that we can use to help with that are short duration bonds. Because if you look uh, at this highlighted area, you'll notice uh, the 30 to 90 day bonds, they were flat to slightly positive over the quarter, uh, held their value. And the reason is these are bonds that mature very quickly. So they're not as susceptible to interest rate risk. They're more susceptible to reinvestment risk. So when you're reinvesting into a bond that is 
come due 30 or 90 days later, it's not a big sea change from a yield perspective from a dollar nominal amount. Rising interest rates are actually kind of a good thing for those types of bonds. When it comes to your longer bonds, the stuff that's at the bottom of the page, that's where you see the most downward pressure. And so when we have a portfolio of bonds as part of a larger uh, comprehensive portfolio, we have short duration bonds that are in there to meet short-term withdrawal needs. And so rest assured, even though the broad bond market is down close to 6% in the US, that doesn't mean that all bonds in a portfolio are down 6%. But we gotta pay attention to, hey, what do, I, what do we own? And do the things we own meet the needs that we have? So that's one of many tools that we can use in order to account for this time period of, hey, negative, negative bond returns and negative stock market returns. The other tool we have is time. Uh, we talk all the time about, hey, volatile assets, things like stocks, things like long duration bonds, those are not assets that we want to use today. Those are assets that we want to look at two, three, five, 10 years from now before we're untapping their value. And so because we've got these short bonds in a portfolio, we get to add the benefit of time, of Waiting through these geopolitical events, waiting through the inflationary events, waiting through the rising interest rate environment, and getting to this period where the portfolio, the rest of the assets in the portfolio can recover without having to make an emotional or an undisciplined decision. So the tail of the tape here is, okay, what, what does my portfolio look like? We always like to end on this slide because this is a great kind of little benchmark uh, slide that just kind of shows a couple of different types of portfolios, all the way from 100% equities down to 100% bonds. Now, one thing I'll tell you is we really use this to illustrate taking risk on one side and avoiding risk on the other. And so our picture is actually going to look even rosier because our fixed income piece is really just that 90-day bond, that really short bond that was, that was flat. Uh, and we do that on purpose. We do that to show that, hey, even though bonds are more conservative, they still have risk. And so when you're looking at these numbers, just remember, these are a guide. These are a guide rail. Uh, they're, they're guidelines, so to speak. Actual results may vary, um, but you're looking for somewhere in that kind of negative 6% to negative 4%, depending on your portfolio. Um, if we add the impact of bonds, Remember, a, a, a moderate portfolio is going to have some long duration bonds that actually adds about one to two negative points to the return that you could expect. So a 60-40 portfolio that had 40% of its uh, holdings in U.S. bonds, really looking at almost a negative 6% for the quarter. But back to my original point, not all bonds are created equal. And so not everything in that part of the portfolio is negative. So that's all we have for this quarter. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, my name's Nick. I'm one of three partners here at Granite Harbor Advisors. My other two partners, uh, Tim and Brian, uh, any one of us would love to answer any questions you might have about the material contained in this webinar, uh, the results that you've gotten from your portfolio over the last 90 days, or really just any financial planning or investment advisory questions that you might have. At uh, Granite Harbor Advisors, we do three things really, really well. We do comprehensive financial planning, we do asset management, and we do risk-based solutions such as insurance. And so anybody that's got questions about any one of those things and how they relate to each other, please feel free to reach out. You can call us at 832-461-0789. You can also reach us via email at info at graniteharbor.com. And a replay of this webinar will be on our website, www.granitharbor.com. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.